learning more about charitable giving during the COVID-19 pandemic and its useful information for fundraisers and their planning. Hi, I'm Bill Stanjakevich. This is the first day from the fundraising school, and I'm joined today by my colleague, Jackie Ackerman. Jackie is heavily involved with the Women's Philanthropy Institute as a researcher and someone who also teaches us about research findings from WPI. Jackie, welcome back to the Fundraising School podcast. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, there's a, a new study that builds on some research that was conducted about a year ago that we discussed in a previous podcast about charitable giving during COVID-19. First of all, before we get into the findings, why is the Women's Philanthropy Institute continuing this important? Um, thanks so much for that question, Bill, um, for a couple of reasons. So our first reason for conducting this study is simply that it's a follow-up study. We first asked questions um, in a survey in May 2020, asking people, um, how has your giving changed due to COVID? Um, and that gave us a lot of really good information, um, but it was you know, two to three months into this crisis, no one really knew what was going to happen. There was a lot of uncertainty. And so we really, a year later, uh, thought, well, now that we know that the pandemic is different um, and we know it's a bit more of an ongoing thing, how has that affected people's giving a year, year and a half into the pandemic? Um, the second reason why the Women's Philanthropy Institute in particular wanted to do this is um, because the COVID pandemic has had disproportionate impacts on women. On women. Um, and that's from you know, women being more likely to be frontline workers and, and kind of in, in that line of danger um, from COVID itself as a health issue to women being more likely to have given up their jobs to stay home with their kids when school shut down. Um, and uh, also the, the stay at home orders really being linked to a rise in intimate partner violence, sadly. So at WPI, we always wanna know how COVID is impacting giving, but especially given this, this issue uh, with women, how COVID's affecting women's philanthropy. And we know historically that women led households are a demographic that is significant in charitable giving one year to the next. And then the pandemic happened. and so that helps inform these research questions. Jackie, what, what was one of the top line findings from the study in terms of just households overall from that May 20 to May 21 snapshot of time? What did you find out? Thanks. Um, well, yeah, we first looked at households giving to COVID relief, um, both overall to COVID and then their overall charitable giving. So first off, the share of households who gave directly to charitable organizations, individuals, or businesses for COVID-19 relief increased really dramatically by 9.3 percentage points between May 2020 and May 2021. Um, and that kind of surprised us actually because we thought that a bit of COVID fatigue would set in, um, but we were really impressed with the, the percentage of households that were giving for COVID relief. Um, I will say also in response to the pandemic, overall charitable giving um, focused on basic needs and health um, increased dramatically between May 2020 and May 2021. Um, one thing I'll say is our, our surveys, because we were able to do two surveys, one in May 2020 and May 2021, I'm talking about two different timeframes. So we saw strong growth in, in that year timeframe, but when we compare to before the pandemic, um, giving has not fully recovered to, to those areas, um, although basic needs and health is up. And so that's very interesting that uh, from May 20 to May 21, saw this increase in charitable giving across all households, especially focused on nonprofits involved with COVID-19 relief. However, despite that increase, charitable giving not returning to where charitable giving was for those households pre-pandemic. And Jackie, it sounds like some subsectors benefited more and others less. Is that correct? Absolutely. So we saw basic needs and health nonprofits, things that you would associate with um, COVID, COVID relief, uh, areas where, where people have been most impacted in the last couple of years. That's where giving increased um, compared to uh, groups like religion and what we've called all other causes, um, really lumping in everything that's not basic needs, health, um, or religion. So that's the arts, that's education, et cetera. Now, there are so many different motivations why people donate, and one of them is uh, direct connection to the situation. Either, you know, I'm a former student, I'm a graduate at a school, or 
you know, had history uh, with a certain cause or, or a certain movement. And of course, you know, millions and millions of people have been infect infected with COVID-19. Has my COVID status uh, affected charitable giving? What, what did the study find in terms of donors who've had COVID and whether or not that influenced their charitable giving behavior? Uh, you are right on the money there, Bill. Um, yes, so people's COVID status or, or the status of people in their household did impact their giving. We, we didn't just want to know if their giving increased or decreased in, in certain time frames. We wanted to know why, because COVID thrown a lot of new and really weird situations at us. So households who uh, had either the respondent to the survey or someone in their household contract COVID-19 um, it didn't change their overall charitable giving, but they were significantly more likely to have given to COVID relief. So that really highlights the personal experience angle, um, much more likely uh, to, to care about those issues and, and to want to, uh, I guess you could say, pay it back. And, and perhaps it's not, am I, am I understanding you correctly, that uh, they maybe redirected charitable giving, that charitable giving maybe they were going to do anyway was redirected specifically to nonprofits involved with COVID-19 services and relief. Am I understanding that right? You are, exactly. Okay. Now, as we, we discussed at the beginning, uh, in addition to these fascinating findings overall, uh, the Women's Philanthropy Institute took a look at specific households, how those households are formed, who's leading those households, especially then in the context of women. Jackie, could you unpack that for us, please, in, in greater detail? What did you find in terms of you know, married couple or partner households, female-led households, male-led households, what do the data reveal? Uh, thanks, Bill. So yeah, right off the bat, I will say we, we for those questions, divide uh, households into three groups. So single men, single women, and married or partnered couples. Um, and so between May 2020 and May 2021, single women and married and partnered couples um, increased their overall charitable giving, but they're not giving as much as they were before the pandemic began. Um, and, and that's true of all households, um, but both single women and couples are still giving less than before the pandemic. Um, and, and single men, this pattern is much less pronounced. So single men, we actually saw outperform these other groups in a way that WPI research has not really seen before. And, and as you think about fundraising then, what do we do with those data? Is this just that snapshot in time? Uh, is, does this affect how we should be planning our fundraising for 2022? Uh, wh what advice do you have for fundraisers, Jackie, as you, you know, continue to marinate in these data and these findings? Well, one thing I do want to mention that I, I don't think I touched on is um, we also looked at the economic impact uh, of COVID. So if a household had a member lose a job or a source of income, um, how did that affect their charitable giving? And it turns out uh, the answer is quite a bit. So it, it affected uh, charitable giving by that household to any cause and overall um, and, and was really a major factor. So I, I think that does have a lot to say to, to fundraisers. Um, you know, it's a complex crisis. It's uh, really looking like it's going to continue for the foreseeable future. And I think fundraisers have to keep in mind that people they could uh, call on or tap to, to give in the past, they, they may be in a different financial situation now, and they may be really sensitive about that. Um, at WPI, we always talk about how philanthropy is, is more than just money, and how can you engage people and keep them engaged. So, um, the, the way that we're thinking about it is people are not going to be in the same situation for, for years, for decades, right? It's, it's going to get better. It is gradually getting better. And so if right now you don't engage donors because they can't give or they can't give big right now, um, then when they are able to in five or 10 years, they'll remember that treatment and they're going to go with the organizations that, that did still want to engage. And we know that that's true of, of women even more so than, than um, the general population. So the extent to which you can ask for small gifts, ask for monthly gifts, um, ask for planned gifts, uh, or, or ask for other forms of engagement, whether it's volunteering, asking for advice, or, or just keeping that phone line open, I think that's really going to influence um, long-term success. At the fundraising school, we teach the 14-step fundraising process and asking for the charitable gift does not happen until step 13. There's a lot of planning 
and preparation for the organization and for the fundraising team. Uh, and asking for the gift is not the last step. The last step is stewardship, which is always important for all of our donors at any dollar amount. And as Jackie is instructing us and guiding us here now more than ever, because philanthropy is voluntary action for the public good and charitable giving of financial resources is just one of those actions. There's volunteering, there's uh, you know giving of uh, expertise, there's advocacy using our voices, many different ways that we can be philanthropically active. And as we look at these data, there could be some significant subsets of donors who need to hit the pause button right now. It's not that they don't care about us anymore, but for whatever reason, especially associated with the health pandemic, they might just need to be placing uh, the pause button right now on their charitable giving. So stewardship needs to meet them where they're at, uh, continue to encourage other forms of philanthropic engagement with our nonprofits, uh, and just perhaps the charitable giving can return when economic conditions and health conditions uh, improve over time. Uh, this is the sense of what we teach at the fundraising school, which we include a specialty course on gender distinctions in giving. We host this every summer in partnership with the Women's Philanthropy Institute. And the Institute's research is available free on our website at philanthropy.iupui.edu. Go across that top toolbar, you'll see the word institutes, and in the pull-down menu, you'll find Jackie Ackerman and the Women's Philanthropy Institute and all of their very useful research. Now, also at that website, if you add a forward slash the fundraising school, you'll find out about our public courses. And again, we're gradually increasing the sites for our in-person courses. We're in our headquarters city of Indianapolis, as well as Washington, DC, Chicago, Atlanta, Dallas, Fort Lauderdale, and more in the pipeline moving forward. Of course, if you're comfortable and more convenient to learn online, we have courses that are synchronous, meaning live, asynchronous, meaning recorded, that you can take according to your schedule. We have custom training that we can bring directly to your nonprofit, your region, your association in the United States and across the world. We have quarterly webinars and, of course, these free weekly podcasts, all available on the Fundraising Schools app, as well as on the website, philanthropy.iupui.edu forward slash the fundraising school. Very grateful for our guest today, Jackie Ackerman, helping us understand this latest, very useful research from the Women's Philanthropy Institute. Our producers today are Jennifer Boffman and Mike Anthony. I'm Bill Stanjakevich, and now you are now more fully informed on this first day from the Fundraising School. Mm -hmm.